Hi, I'm Baya Enoch, a tutor at North Coast Medical Training College. And uh, today I want to take you through a very brief topic on physiology of muscle contraction. When you're talking of the physiology of a muscle contraction, we're looking at what happens until a muscle contracts. Right now I'm holding a pen. For me to be able to use this pen or to write anything down, some muscles are going to contract so that I will be able, or so that I can be able to write down whatever I want to write. Now, previously we looked at the structure of a muscle and we saw how the muscle tissues are organized. Microscopically, we find that we have muscle fibers and in these muscle fibers we have filaments. Now these filaments are the ones that are responsible for the contraction and because these filaments are the ones that are responsible for this muscle contraction we can call the physiology of muscle contraction the filament sliding mechanism because movement of these filaments is the one that is going to lead to the contraction of this muscle. Now a muscle does not contract wholly we have the contractile units in a muscle that we are calling sarcomeres. And in these sarcomeres is where we are having these filaments. And we have two types of filaments. That is the actin, which is thin, and myosin, which is thick. Now, each of these filaments has some properties on them that are the ones that help in the attachment and sliding so that we end up with a contracting that will lead to the muscle contraction. The actin has the binding site on it, it has the troponin, and it has the tropomyosin. On the other hand, the myosin has a head whose function is to attach to the binding site on the actin so that the sliding can take place and eventually the contraction takes place. So we have the binding site on the actin where the head of the myosin is supposed to attach itself but then this binding site is hidden or is blocked by something we are calling the tropomyosin. So for this binding site to be revealed we have to get a key that is going to push away or is going to open or to pave way for the binding site to be revealed so that this myosin head can attach itself to the binding site. The key that comes to open this lock that is created is the calcium ion. So once a stimulus comes, because we know that a muscle won't contract on its own, it needs to be stimulated, and the stimulus comes through a nerve, then once a stimulus comes or reaches the muscle cell, then there's an influx of calcium ions into the muscle cell. Once the calcium ions enter the muscle cell, they settle on the troponin then the tropomyosin is displaced from the binding site once the binding site is revealed then we have the head of the myosin coming to attach itself on the binding site which is now free and then the sliding takes place now this sliding can't take place if we don't have energy so as calcium is coming in already the uh, the head of the myosin has ADP which is stored in it, then the ADP enables the head of the myosin to attach itself onto the binding site. And as the sliding effect is taking place, or as the movement is happening, then the head of the myosin drops the ADP so that it attaches itself on the binding site and the sliding takes place. Once sliding has taken place, we have to get back to the start or we have to release or the bond between the actin and the myosin head has to be broken and it can only be broken when now ATP comes in and attaches itself to the head of the myosin. This breaks the bond and then the head of the myosin releases itself from the binding site and the bond is broken, thus the muscle relaxes. Thank you. I hope you've learned something.